new technologies enable AI-powered media manipulation. It's any kind of algorithmic manipulation of images, audio, and video. And so an example of that would be uh, deep fakes or face swapping deep fakes specifically, where you're actually making someone say something that they might not have actually said. And these can be very convincing then the question that we're curious about is how do people spot these and how well do they learn to spot a new kind of media manipulation? This is actually not a new question at all. In fact, this kind of stuff happened for a long time. And an example of it is back in Soviet era, Joseph Stalin hired artists to essentially recreate history. He hired artists to paint people out of photographs. But where it's interesting, where it's really useful for thinking about with respect to societal implications is the fact that media manipulations can happen automatically today. And it doesn't mean it can always happen perfectly, but it can happen without the artistic and technical skill that previously was required. And so what we wanted to do was present a new media manipulation technology that no one's ever seen before to learn how quickly people can identify, detect these kind of manipulations, not just in a single image, but in many different varieties of images. And so what we did is we created Deep Angel. And Deep Angel is a AI, and specifically it combines two different kinds of computer vision techniques. One is object detection, and that's using Mascar CNN. Another is generative in-painting, and that's using the deep fill algorithm. When we combine the two, what we can do is detect an object in an image, that could be a person, could be a dog, it could be a surfboard, then remove that person from the image, and then replace the removed pixels with pixels that make sense with respect to the general context of the image. So we hosted it online, Anyone with internet access in the world could come to this experiment. And in fact, we had 15,000 plus people participate in the experiment. And what we see is people on the first image they see are 78% accurate on average. Well, by the 10th image they see, people were 88% accurate. And so then the question is, where does this learning come from? Well, part of the learning is feedback. So after every time they saw an image and, and gave their guess, we told them what the correct image was. And they also got a sense of what are they looking for? What we see from a correlational analysis, images with subtle manipulation help people learn faster. It could be a image that has low entropy to begin with, or it could be an image where the object that's removed is very small. And the general conclusions are people are able to identify machine manipulated media, at least in this particular context, very quickly. What we want to do is make the outputs of AI manipulation technologies available to the general public. No, 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 no. So when it comes a time when some malicious actor is actually using them, they're prepared and they've seen it before and they can hopefully think critically for themselves. No! There's these additional follow-on questions of just what is the cognitive toolkit that we use to identify misinformation? But what happens when we have videos that are manipulated? Is it that you see some visual aspect that has an issue with it? Is it that there's audio that doesn't sound like the actual person? Do you even know what that person really sounds like? Or is it that you're using some kind of critical reasoning and your knowledge about a situation uh, that allows you to say, okay, this really doesn't make sense. A liberal politician wouldn't say this kind of thing. I'm going to kill you. And so the question is, when do people use what? And what are uh, things that we should think about for how to train people to better detect? I'm really, really sorry. I apologize unreservedly. <laughs>